Welcome. Call me Notebook M. I'm here to lament the fact that my own irony has turned against me. A few years ago, at my WordPress blog, I used the tagline, speaking because it is allowed. It was meant as a jab at people who back then seemed reluctant to discuss anything of importance. In my view, the nation was dangerously silent. Paul Simon felt the same way in 1965, so I had some company. Now, thanks to Donald Trump, the voices of America are screaming. They have never been so loud, so forceful, so broad, so mixed. Twitter lights up every time Trump or his associates speak. Kellyanne Conway voiced the phrase, alternative facts, and in no time, that phrase was repeated 380,000 times on Twitter. And with the now famous Women's March, real speaking has begun to compete with social media. With all those voices, I went quiet, or relatively so. I mean, how do you possibly wedge yourself into a discussion when everything you want to say has been said and said and said? So I lost my voice. In this first video cast at Notebook M, I'm trying to get it back. When the people were hush, I argued that their silence was frightening. With no one speaking, the good had few allies and the bad was without enemies. Worse, there was a cultural underbelly that kept its dangerous opinions to itself. I appreciate free speech, even if it is offensive, because I want to know the scope of this underbelly and how harsh its thoughts can be. I didn't want this group suddenly surfacing from the depths, overwhelming the existing order and becoming America. In today's new vocal climate, I now know, for example, that an old girlfriend has a less than kind view of a certain race, that a former schoolmate sees evil and conspiracy everywhere, and that a startling number of people feel threatened by the full and vigorous freedom of other people. That's good. Knowing this is good. What's not so good is that in this new political age, there is only yes and no, me or you. Policy no longer comes from the better parts of two arguments. President Trump has helped usher in this era of speaking. He pretty much invented it. And so much has been said about him. Many fear him. Many worry about what he will do and about the things that will be done in his name. References to tyranny and fascism can be found everywhere. The tactics and sins of Hitler are being revisited like never before, all presented in an effort to show what supposedly is coming to America. As I join the conversation, I'm taking a different view. I'm recommending that we not fear tyranny as much as showmanship. Yes, I worry our country will be run like a show. New York Times columnist David Brooks agrees that Trump seems uninterested in the traditional forms of governing. He called Trump the man who isn't there. The new president, in my view, seems singularly hell-bent not on policy but on capturing a huge, adoring, and compliant audience. His old reality show continues, only in the White House. With this new show, he commands the biggest spotlight in the history of show business. And he's got great material. While Brooks asks, who will govern while Trump tweets, I ask, will showman Trump's material grow stale and predictable over time? Will he begin to play like a tired old rerun that people watch while doing other things? Will America change the channel on Trump? We will know soon enough. Since everyone is speaking, all we need do is listen. Thanks. I'm Notebook M. Please remember the words of Winston Churchill who said, the Americans will always do the right thing after they've exhausted all the alternatives.